Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. So, tonight, we've got a great guest for you. We're going to be talking about what it means to be a conservative, what it means to be a rhino. That's going to be coming up in segments three and four. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about ARPA, ARPA, ARPA. Uh, you've been hearing a lot about federal monies coming to the states um, because of coronavirus, COVID stuff. We had uh, CARES Act back in March, and we had another big drop of money in December. And we have ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act. And uh, that has been passed, signed, and we're getting the money coming through the pipeline. And so there's a lot to, there's a lot to unpack here. Um, the question is, is it being used properly? Is it even necessary? Now, I, in the researching, found many articles about this, and of course, it is fairly recent, the actual passage. However, it was discussed for many months, and uh, one of the articles I found that I think really takes a, an interesting economic look at it uh, came out back in January of this year, and um, I'm gonna, we're going to pull it up here. It's from the American Enterprise Institute. The, the article is uh, entitled, Is President Biden's $1.9 trillion rescue plan the right approach? And it's a Q&A with a, a well-known uh, economist. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to hit a couple of these graphics with you here, and then we'll discuss. Okay, the next graphic up, it shows in this, in this Q&A, in this interview, uh, he says, late last year, Congress passed a $900 billion stimulus bill. Now Joe Biden has proposed, and again, now it's passed, this interview was in January, a $1.9 trillion plan. It seems that every time a new stimulus is proposed, Wall Street raises its economic forecast for the next two years. Does that, means, does that mean Biden's new plan is good for the economy? So let's discuss that for a second. It is, it is interesting because we know we're borrowing money and we know that that's going to have long-term consequences. And for people like myself that are thinking, wow, this is, this is foreboding, I'm, I, I'm thinking, how do I prepare for this? And yet, the economy is doing better and better and better. Stock market's going up, crypto's going up, gold's going up, everything's going up. It just doesn't seem to make sense. And I think what we find out in this article is that it makes things look good in the short term. And that is so often the case with just about any government plan any government scheme, it looks good initially, at least how it's intended. It doesn't look long term. It doesn't look at stage two or stage three. And one of the things in the discussion here is about the, the amount of money and whether it's really necessary. We're going to get into that in just a second here. Let's go to the next graphic. They say, if, if it were the case that borrowing money and giving it to households to increase their spending were a free lunch, then we would do it continuously. However, the money that we borrow has to be paid back at some point, which puts at risk slowing the economy in the future. And I, I would say it doesn't, that, that's putting it mildly. It doesn't put it at risk. It will slow. It, it, it must be slowed. When we have to pay this back, um, there is no doubt it's going to have a severe effect. The question is when? And the question is why are we willing to do that? You know, we're, we're just kicking the can down the road. And, you know, we can understand why politicians do that. But why is it that the country as a whole seems so readily accepting of this notion that borrowing is good? Now, these, these folks are talking, these two gentlemen are talking here about these consequences and that it is absolutely necessary to do this type of stimulus spending. The problem is that there are always downturns in the economy. And you have these Keynesians that look at the idea of deficit spending, borrowing money, to try and stimulate the economy with no concern for these late effects in an effort to make the economy smooth. And what they do is end up causing bigger problems down the road in an effort to smooth out small problems right now. Interestingly, I looked in state network policy, and they are looking at the, the, all of this spending. They are saying the pre-pandemic expected growth, it's only about $130 billion short. $130 billion short. As they've looked at this 
from before January, when this was first being discussed, through now, each of the new predictions, each of the new models show that we are less and less and less in the hole from what they were predicting. However, the spending is attempting to fill a hole which is gargantuous in size and which was predicted early on in the year, which is always the case. Government is always behind the eight ball. It should also be noted that this hole that we're talking about filling, which is at one point was going to be a billion and then it was going to be 600 million, and again now we're looking at as little as 150 billion, I'm um, sorry, million. Um, we have to remember that this hole, this however small or large it is, this was not caused by the coronavirus. This was not caused by COVID. This was caused as a response, as a government response to COVID. There is no doubt about that. And I, we, we cannot say that enough times. When I hear, whenever we hear about um, this is caused by COVID, that's caused by COVID, the job losses, the domestic abuse, the suicide, um, the, the shuttering of businesses, COVID didn't do that. COVID made some people sick. Government did all of the rest. So the whole is caused by government. Keep in mind, folks, that this is a government scheme to correct a problem that government caused, right? And it's an overcorrection. We don't need all of those billions of dollars, all of those trillions of dollars. And I, I, earlier I corrected myself to millions. I was right on, on the 150 uh, uh, billion. Um, but the, the, the nature of it is that Government caused the problem, now they're fixing it. They're fixing it with a wrong amount, exceeding what's necessary, and they're putting it into wrong places. It, it, and this is routine, this goes back to the Obama uh, stimulus, right? Infrastructure, shovel-ready jobs, except they weren't shovel-ready and they didn't go to create those things. You had the CARES money in March with billions uh, and billions of dollars going to overseas governments for God knows what, with very little, uh, 150 billion went to states. That's it. And a lot of it went to cut checks to people who didn't need them. People making six figures, well into six figures, uh, getting checks, their children getting checks, everyone's getting checks, um, completely unnecessary. So the, the ham-handedness of government schemes is so wasteful and so problematic that in an effort to fix the problem that it caused is actually causing a bigger problem. And this is a problem we're going to be seeing in the future. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, a lot more about this in the next segment. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to impart some more interesting facts to you. Stick with us, we'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. 
Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Arrow Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Heroes with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. Hey Bucks fans, if you're planning an outing, birthday, or employee appreciation night, then bring your group out to the Buck Stop for a night of fast-paced, high-scoring football. Your group will receive discounted tickets, options for reserved seating, scoreboard messages, VIP services, swag, and a space to gather during the game. You can also participate in pre-game ceremonies, halftime entertainment, in-game contests, and more. Call 701-595-0771 or visit bismarckbucks.com forward slash tickets. All GA is first come, first serve. We'll see you on the turf. Go Bucks! Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We are talking about ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act, in which we are going to be receiving uh, another $1.9 trillion. Uh, the CARES Act back in March, $2.2 trillion. And then we had another uh, tranche, as they say, of money of $900 billion. Now we're at $1.9 trillion, discussing whether it's necessary uh, or, or whether it's wise. I want to bring up a, a couple more graphics that illustrate some of the discussion in this Q&A session between the economists. This was in January. A few things have changed. Uh, they say here, the policy debate seems to have forgotten that Congress appropriated $900 billion of economic relief and recovery spending this past December. Now, this is an Im important thing in my mind because it just shows that something as little as $0.9 trillion is something that you can forget about because the discussion that had been occurring for the $1.9 trillion was as though that never happened. The discussions were about all of the, the issues, the economic issues, again, caused by government um, without recognizing what that $900 billion was going to do. The next graphic. It states here, the economy does not need $2.8 trillion of economic recovery and relief spending right now. That amount would fill the output gap several times over. So that $2.8 is the uh, $1.9 trillion with ARPA and then the $0.9 uh, that just came out a few months ago. That amount would fill the output gap several times over. Right now, which was in January, the economy is probably only about $600 billion below its potential output. And as I mentioned, uh, we are most recently looking at only $150 billion below the anticipated economic output. So the next graphic, the economic hole caused by the pandemic will total below $500 billion. Certainly, we're already at $150. When you're talking about another $3 trillion in stimulus, we're going to be filling that hole multiple times over, far more than what is necessary. All right. Let's talk about filling that hole. What are we looking at? One of the things is that people were demanding that more money, more of the, uh, this stimulus, would go to states and locals. So $150 billion of it went to uh, states and locals before. Now we're looking at $350, $350 billion. So it's more. Now what's interesting is they are selectively distributing the money to uh, women and minorities. And so, um, uh, some of these, these, these special plans, these schemes in which certain businesses can get money, you, it's a first come, first serve, but if you're a white male, um, you are put back um, quite far in line until all of the um, people of color or um, females uh, are addressed first. So um, is that, is that a, a, a means of financial justice, of COVID justice, I don't know. Um, you know, again, we, we want to look for is, is uh, treating people without regard to their gender or to the color of their skin, but not the Biden administration. Um, so that's one of the aspects. 
Another thing is that, not, sh not surprising at all, the blue states are going to be getting more than the red states. Now, it's not overtly because they're blue. It's because the method of handing out the money, in part, is based on unemployment, um, especially federal unemployment. The blue states were the states that clamped down the hardest, the, the states with the Democrat governors. They are the ones that were the most draconian, shutting everything down, shutting things down for the longest period of time, causing nearly irreparable harm to their own economies and causing the unemployment rate to be much higher than uh, other states. Because a good portion of that money is based on the unemployment rate, those blue states are going to fare very well. Um, on the other hand, there is a method, uh, a portion of the money, there's uh, uh, 500 million that goes out just to each state in general without regard um, to to uh, uh, the population. So because of that, North Dakota, Wyoming, South Dakota uh, get a little uh, bump up, and so it wouldn't be as disparate as you might think because we suffer in the one area because our unemployment rate is not high, um, but we balance out because we're a very sparsely populated state. Uh, if you look here, um, the states that voted for President Biden will get $1,042 per resident the states that voted for Trump will get $901 per resident. Not a huge difference, but still $140 bucks, uh, per resident. You multiply that by the million or whatever. Um, you look at the states with the heavy economic restrictions. California had uh, lost 7.6% uh, unemployment. Michigan lost 86 But then you go to Texas, they only lost 2.3%. So this is why there is a significant disparity in the red versus blue states. Um, again, that 500 million flat to each state benefits the very sparsely uh, populated states like North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, you, uh, counties, there's a fair amount that go to counties based on population, doesn't help North Dakota. Uh, the biggest thing for the disparity is that unemployment. Uh, back to this whole, this gargantuous, this gargantuous bucket of money that we're dumping into a much smaller hole, that hole created by government, it's important to recognize that we're already so far in debt. Each living person, man, woman, and child is in debt right now for the U.S. debt, $85,000. So we're talking about borrowing money from the future, meaning from future people, to pay off this debt. So how is it that each person is going to pay their $85,000. Well, they're not. People that aren't working, uh, that are retired, they can't pay for the, the so their 85,000 goes to the next generation. All of these new trillions of dollars goes to the next generation. And the idea that we can just kick the can down the road because it makes sense politically, because it feels good to do now without, without appreciating the ramifications of what's going to happen, I, I think is, is criminal. It's absolutely criminal. And this is the usual case, right? Government, we have a person A that thinks that person B should have some kind of money. And so person A implores the government to take from person C and redistribute the money to person B to create a better overall economy, a more fair and just existence. In this case, we're taking from person D, who's not even born yet. We're taking from person D, who is our grandchildren. Person D is supposed to pay person B. It's, it's unbelievable the harm that we are willingly doing to our country, to future generations, because we want to turn a blind eye, because it's comfortable right now, in the here and now, it's comfortable to say, let's go into debt, throw money at the problem, the economy is going to be benefited, and it will. The economy will be benefited from this for the next few quarters, the next three quarters, the next five quarters, whatever it might be. But what a shame, what a shame what we are doing to our country. Next up, Dustin Garillo. We are going to be talking about rhinos and conservatives, lions and bears.
When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Prairie Patriot Firearms and Training is the region's most complete gun and training center. Five lane indoor range, a gun shop, and a certified training facility. Firearms training courses are offered daily for new, intermediate, and advanced shooters. If you're not comfortable in a classroom setting, Prairie Patriot offers one-on-one -on -one private lessons. From basic self-defense training to concealed weapons testing, along with a full line of guns, ammunition, holsters, and concealment clothing. Prairie Patriot, 3930 Memorial Highway, prairiepatriot.com. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature gyros with the region's only gyro meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to fold them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back to No Apologies on Back Your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. I am here with my friend Dustin Garolo, Managing Director for the North Dakota, North Dakota Watchdog Network. And um, I'm glad that you agreed to come on. Absolutely. I, I can be here anytime you need me. <laughs> so, I, uh, so I asked Dustin to be on, oddly enough, just for a Facebook, lengthy Facebook post. And uh, I just, I find the topic of your Facebook post very, very interesting. Uh, I, I like the discussion on political philosophy. And um, your, the title of your article on Facebook is Conservatives and Rhinos, Why the Republican Party Will Never Be What You Want It to Be. And um, man, I, uh, again, I, I, I'm, I, I agreed with a lot of the stuff you wrote, but I, and I also had some disagreements. And so I thought, what a, what a perfect thing to discuss for uh, a couple of segments. Because I think it's interesting, especially in light of what's happening across the state. I think one of, there's a district tonight in District 8, and uh, my district, District 7, is on Wednesday. And we know that there's a grassroots push um, of people that are coming in, and they're saying, hey, you know, we want, you're not doing things the way we want. I think it's, I think it's a good thing. No, no matter what, um, it's not that I'm you know, wanting certain people to be out or this or that. It's just any time. I'm sorry, to, I'm not hogging the whole segment, Dustin. I'm gonna get, <laughs> but any time that there is a, a movement to get people involved in politics in their lives, I, I think is a good thing, regardless of, of the outcomes. So, again, Dustin, thanks for being on. Tell me a little bit about uh, the article. What, what prompted you to, to put it out there? Well, you know, it, it's been a longstanding discussion amongst us conservatives going back, you know, 15 years. Uh, 
about uh, you know what a true conservative is, what the Republican Party should look like. And I got involved. I started as a, a chairman of the College Republicans at Dickinson State University. I went and uh, got a job with the a group out of D.C. called the Leadership Institute, which is one of the premier uh, uh, training programs for young conservatives. I ended up working for the Republican Party in Iowa for a while, and then I came back here, worked for Americans for Prosperity with Ed Schaefer and Dwayne Sand, and, and then have been independent since then, still working with those two. And you know, along the way, we've had so many different waves of conservatives. Like when I came in, I remember interviewing with Leadership Institute, and I made a comment to one of the guys that was interviewing me, and I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of George W. Bush. And the response was, yeah, we aren't either, so don't worry about that. You know, I, the party line wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, in, in 08 and to 2010, we had Obama and Obamacare come in. I, I was working with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce to fight Obamacare in North Dakota. I was their point person here. And every two to four years since I've been involved, there's been a new wave of grassroots activists. And you know, I, I got started in trying to recruit grassroots activists on campus. And you know, a lo all these years, we get these new classes of folks. It's almost like every four years, just like a high school or a college. And each wave of people who call themselves conservative are just a little bit different. You know, you have the, the anti-neocon wave that I was a part of. You have the, the Ron Paul wave. You have the Tea Party wave. And then you have the Trump wave. And it, all these groups are very different from each other. Uh, some are very policy-oriented, very, very bookish. Uh, and then others are very reactionary. You know, when it comes to the, the Trump waves are very reactionary. Um, it's not necessarily that they know um, what the policy should be. It's that they are, are, are more reactionary to all the bad things that the Democrats are proposing. And so, you know, you have this, th these various waves, and then you have all the other waves that happened in the past. And the only thing that really is a uniting uh, thing right now for the Republican Party is it that they're anti-Democrat. Democrats are, are worse. That's the only thing that, that really unites the party right now, in my view, because there is such a distinction between, uh, you know, 10 years ago, the Republican Party was the party of free trade and, you know, that sort of thing. And now it's essentially return the, uh, after the Trump years uh, is closer to what I would consider what uh, the Truman Democrats were about, tariffs, mm -hmm. pro-unionism, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, so you've got so many different things going on. And then you have the, the establishment issue and the anti-establishment. And, and all these factions interplay. You know, we used to joke that, that in North Dakota, at any given moment, there was three to five different Republican parties. I, I think now we're closer to 10 or 12. Uh, depending on what the issue is, and the issues are not what they used to be. Yeah. And, and so when we're looking at what we as individuals want the Republican Party to be, we have to recognize that everybody has their own view of that. There is no litmus test. Um, you know, we can look at the, uh, you know, Barry Goldwater, when he got started in the, in the 60s, you know, he was as far right as you could possibly get mm -hmm. and get elected still. By the time he was in his 80s, in the 1980s, and he was objecting to the evangelical movement, at taking over the Republican Party. So these things have been going on forever. Um, the Republican Party started out as the liberal party to, to abolish slave, slavery primarily. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and part of that was empowering the federal government. That flipped in, in the uh, 1940s and 50s. And so it, it's always been very schizophrenic, and, and you've always had these factions. And it, it's just a constant conflict between these different groups. Right. I think the, um, when we go back historically, you're right, there are some big you know, 180-degree turns and, 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 and dips and bends. But 
But I think that there's some consistency, at least to the, to the nature of the struggle, at, from the 50s going forward, I would say, or at least you know, the late 50s um, in the Goldwater era. Um, I'd like to go through, I, I think it's worthwhile, I mean, that, you, you gave a, a, great, a great overview, but I wanted to go through your um, post, your article, and just kind of have a discussion as we go through. Uh, the first thing, uh, right in the beginning, uh, you say, like many, I thought for years that political parties were a way to promote one's beliefs and philosophy. It took me over a decade to come to terms with the fact that this is not true. Uh, and you go on to say, especially when the party is designed to be a big tent that brings a broad range of members together. So initially, I, I disagree with the statement. I still think that a political party is a way to promote one's beliefs. Um, and philosophy. However, I see where you're going with it. The, the, the bigger the tent, the less meaningful any sense of political philosophy um, and beliefs because it becomes so watered down and dilute. So, so I agree with you there, but I think that you have a... I, I, I'm still clinging to some um, ideology or some um, being an idealist, uh, and I think <laughs> it seems like you have a more cynical view now, maybe after everything that you've been through on the nature and purpose of political parties? Yeah, I, it, when I got started, I remember having a discussion with, with Jason Sturrock, who was running the Republican Party, and he, he gave me the statement that the party is designed to win elections, and everything else is, is, is a sideshow. I didn't like that answer. I didn't like mm -hmm. that statement for a long time, but I've come to terms with the fact that that's reality. I've also come to terms with the fact that the party platform is not the Bible. It is a buffet table. It is something for everybody, uh, rather than a Ten Commandments type of situation. Mm. Uh, and that's how the party has used it. That's how the party's built the big tent. And so the only way to change that structure is to completely demolish the way that the party has succeeded. Now, I'm not a party person. I, I gave up on carrying the water for the party years ago as well. Uh, I believe that everybody should be pushing their own issues and, and have their own explanation for it other than just because somebody with an R behind their name is for it or against it. You know, I, 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 hypocrisy and consistency are two issues that have become bigger issues to me than the actual... Uh, philosophical issues that get debated constantly. If you're a Republican and you take a position one way or another, let's stick to it. Let's not uh, flip-flop on that based on who is for it and who's against it. Right. Now, but consistency is very much, in, in, for me, for many people, part of a political philosophy. Let's continue the discussion. When we come back, folks, hang with us. We'll be back shortly. We're the Ladies of Another View, bringing you a fresh view on local issues and different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. When you're buying windows, make sure you're comparing apples to apples. Hi, I'm Jesse with the Window Source. We only sell you the best windows and doors for the best price. Call the Window Source. Just because you pay less, doesn't mean you get less. If you don't know what's going on in education in this country, then you don't know what's going to happen in the future of this country. And it's important. I'm Dr. Duke. And I'm Katie. Watch the Dr. Duke Show weekdays at 4 p.m. Central Time on Beck TV. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Hero's with the region's only Hero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to pull them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. 
It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Vendell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. We are with Dustin Gaurillo, the Managing Director of North Dakota Watchdog Network. We're talking about his article posted on Facebook about conservatives and rhinos. Um, Dustin, you had indicated, referenced back uh, the anecdotal story of uh, where one of the guys was telling you the purpose of a party. And, you know, I think it, it, it depends on who's in charge. You know, you have a breakdown of three types of people getting involved. And I would say it depends on which type of person is in charge of the party as far as what they see the true purpose of the party. But um, it's interesting because I also think there are three types. I have different, in my mind, I've had different names for them, but really they're effectively the same three groups. Um, let's go through yours. The first one you indicate are the party liners. Tell us, what, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, the party liners are the ones that will go along with anything the, their leadership says is the party line. And they don't question it. They don't uh, object to anything. As long as it is uh, coming from the top, they will go with it because that's just what the way that they are. Yep. And that is the majority of the party, in my view. I, I think it is a good segment of the party. And there's no doubt about it. I gave a talk one time at a Republican event um, in Fargo, some luncheon thing. And uh, the title of my talk was um, Principle Before Party um, and uh, why that was important. I always called these folks the establishmentarians, but I, your, your, yours is more correct because the establishmentarians are whoever has been in power. Mm -hmm. So if you have a different group besides the party liners in power, then they become the establishmentarians. Hopefully one day the conservatives will be the establishmentarians. But um, so that's party liners, and I agree that's a, a, a significant a significant part of it. It's it, there's a nature of um, of being part of a club of of having people that you get along with and that you like being with, and that and you're in that club and you have a position in that club and you want to retain those relationships and that position and therefore there is a I think a natural human tendency to say we need to promulgate this and you become a party liner saying well this is what we need to do and th that is in essence what's going on in the in the districts right now uh, you've got um, the party liners re or, I think or at least the establishmentarians that don't want the apple cart upset they want to maintain the status quo your next one, category two, you, you uh, call the climbers. Yeah, the climbers are, are people who uh, are using the party to gain power, using the party to uh, get jobs. Uh, these are most party staffers. These are most uh, people who have no real philosophical reason to be a Republican other than to get elected. And we know for a fact, without naming names, that a significant number of elected Republicans, uh, if there was more, a, a more competitive opposition party in North Dakota, they probably wouldn't have the letter R behind their name. And, and those are who I would call the climbers. Gotcha. The opportunists. Yes. Yep, absolutely. So, and it's, within those 
groups, there are sort of almost like quasi caucuses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we hear about imperial castes um, having you know a collective uh, caucus meeting, and so Cass County is what I'm referring to, and um, doing what it takes with regard to votes and power plays and so forth that help that group. And you've got the Bismarck Mafia. Have you heard that phrase before? I've heard Minot Mafia. Uh, Minot I, Mafia? Uh, that, that's, that's the old one. Bismarck Mafia. Bismarck is just Bismarck. It's Bismarck Old Boys Club. So, uh, but it's the same thing. Okay. And then uh, there's a new one, which is the Bergamites. Bergamites. Okay. Bergamites, the, or the Governor's Caucus, where okay. people are uh, working to position themselves within the framework of what Bergam uh, has or has been doing. And of course, that tends to be a lot of far goings. And, and, and they've learned that uh, because he has unlimited funds to take you out or prop you up, yep. depending on where you are, um, that for a, a significant number of, of uh, elected officials, that's an important thing, and that's self-preservation. And, and when self-preservation uh, takes precedent over the principles and the philosophy that you say you're for, mm -hmm. that's where the hypocrisy and lack of consistency comes in, and that's where we really are having some problems. Right. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. If you come in, but you don't truly have a set of principles that you, that you own and believe in, it's almost like it's, there's no hypocrisy. Because you, you came in as a sellout. Mm -hmm. So if you're a sellout, you're not, you're not staying true to what you said you believed in and why you asked people to elect you. But it's, uh, I think it, that's a problem is there's a dearth of true um, uh, people that, that, that really, really believe deep, deep down in these principles. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, there, there is also an argu to, argument to be made that the sellouts are the true capitalists among us. That if you are willing to sell your your philosophical beliefs to whoever's going to put you in power, that that's a form of capitalism. Mm, I'm going to disagree <laughs> with you there, my friend. That is not capital. Capitalism is a free market. It's Machiavellian. It, it, that's exactly what I was going to say, Dustin. It is truly Machiavellian. No question yeah. about that. No question about that. But I will, I will, I will fight. I was on thinking that of Ed one. Schultz. You know, Ed Schultz was a a, a Republican in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Approach to run for governor at one point, uh, and then because there was money in the Democratic side of things, he went that way. And, yeah. and you know, well, this, that's what that's what um, my understanding is. That's what John Hoven did when he decided mm -hmm. to run for governor. Democrat, well, no, Republican was the way to get in in there. And then and then Burgum, I mean, he's not a political philosophically a political right. person, so. You just pick whichever party is going to get you there. Well, psh, Democrats, you know, <laughs> there was no hope there, so you just pick whatever's the, the, opportunity. The, the thing about Governor Burgum is that before he was elected, he was close. What he was saying publicly was closer to what we believe than the way it is now. You know, in 2015, he was talking about uh, zeroing out the state income tax. You yeah. know, if he got out there uh, and, and wanted to do that right now, you'd be number two behind him, and I'd be number three. Yeah. Absolutely. Why hasn't he advocated for that? that he, he's a powerful man in the most, arguably the most powerful seat in the state. And if he was for that before, why did he not? Because we easily could have had that. If we would have had leadership that wanted to get rid of the income tax, zeroing it out, it could have happened. Mm -hmm. It could have happened. Okay, uh, group number three, the Reformationists that I have previously called the conservatives. So tell us about the Reformationists. The, the Reformationists are anybody who thinks that the party is off track mm -hmm. and needs a change. That, that includes uh, fiscal conservatives, social conservatives, fiscal hawks, uh, and, and libertarians. Uh, and that, this is anybody who wants to change the party from what it is now today. Um, and, and this is where, these are the people that use the word rhino because, um, you know, if, you're, if you believe that your vision of the party at, at, in a purest sense is such, then the people who are not fulfilling that, whether you're using the platform or you're using historical conservative uh, ideals, uh, then, then you're the ones that are using the term rhino a lot. And, mm -hmm. and this is where the crux of my article came down, in, at, which is, the people who are in charge of the Republican Party are the ones that decide who the Republicans are. It's not those of us who want to change the party who decide who the real Republicans are. 
in fact, I would argue, and, and I've come to the conclusion that we may actually be the rhinos because we are trying to change the party <laughs> into something that it is not and it, that it does not want to be. Right. Let, uh, I want to argue that point. Uh, are you willing to stay over Absolutely. one more segment? Okay. Yep. So stick with us, folks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put out my argument against what Dustin just said. So um, we'll be right back. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Spas, etc. Yeah, yeah. You've come to know and trust us for over 18 years with the largest selection and showroom in Western North Dakota for our beautiful Sundance spas. Plus, you can pick out your next home experience with our selection of pool tables, chuckle boards, and fun accessories. Spas, etc. Your relaxation destination on Maine and Bismarck. Forty years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Every great pizza has a secret. At New York To Go, that secret lies in our perfectly recreated New York water, the key ingredient to making our signature New York-style pizza. We also feature Yero's with the region's only Yero meat spit, plus Nathan's hot dogs, calzones, and our delicious jumbo buffalo wings. Try a 14-inch or our special giant 20-inch pizza tonight. You gotta know how to pull them if you wanna hold them. New York To Go, we deliver for you. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Welcome back. It's no apologies, folks. You made it. It's segment five. I could, and Dustin, uh, we d were discussing on the break, we could do, for us, another ten segments on this. It probably wouldn't hold your interest for ten more segments, but hopefully it has for this third segment on this topic. Dustin, uh, you had said uh, just before we broke that, in a sense, perhaps we're the rhinos. And, uh, and I get where you're coming from. If you, if you are so outnumbered, is it that you're really trying to change the party back to what it what is or should be? Or are you just trying to make a new party and you actually don't belong? But here's the thing. So the, the party has a platform. Mm -hmm. And I know it has resolutions. Resolutions change all the time and it depends on, you know, there's a lot of little gamesmanship in there. But it has a basic platform that changes very little um, every couple years, very little. And my thought is this party platform if we adhered to it, would be very much what the reformationists in general want. So long as the people in power have that platform, it is the people who are in the party not ad adhering to the platform that are the rhinos. Now, if they, were, if they got in and they changed it and they said, you know what, we do pick winners and losers, we do like increased spending, we don't like tax cuts, 
then that platform would indicate that, yeah, I would truly be the rhino. So what say you? The party platform is a marketing document. <laughs> it, it is designed to sell you a timeshare, essentially, that here's why you should be in the Republican Party. Here's what we believe. Don't look behind the curtain when we actually vote, though. Don't call out the ways that we are picking winners and losers, mm -hmm. that we are subsidizing one industry over another. Uh, it, the, the platform is designed to uh, placate those who are neither party liners nor climbers, because those folks will always have a reason to be involved. It's the reformationists that need the reason to come out and vote. We can look at 2006 was the big year where, uh, where conservatives did not come out and vote, and Democrats took over, and that was when Nancy Pelosi won again, or the, won the first time. Uh, because conservatives stayed home, the anti-Bush sentiment within the Republican Party had hit it, its peak. And so the party platform is there to make reformationists feel good about the party. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to disagree with you. I, that is a very cynical approach because the party platform is there and it's being used the way you're saying. Yes, that's how it is being used. Mm -hmm. But it is there with a different purpose and that is to outline what this party is supposed to be about. And as you know, and I'm sure you agree, th a party is simply a means to an end, it's a it's a vehicle. Mm -hmm. So when people like you or me or others, uh, or even on the on the on the progressive side, they say, you know what? I think that the world would be a better place if government would do this, 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 and this. And then they can say, here's the Democrat platform, here's the Republican platform. If neither of those platforms offers the vision you have, then you can go to a third party or you can create a party. But if I've got a vision and I see the platform is this amazing thing, and I agree with, and, and, and you say in your article here, you know, that it's expected you go to, you, you believe every single one to the T, and I, I don't think that that's realistic. I, again, think that's a little cynical. Um, but, you know, Reagan had that 80-20 rule, whatever it might be. Yes, there are people that call themselves Republicans, and they believe in the Second Amendment plank of the platform, and that's it. You know. No, that's probably pushing it. But if you believe in, in eight out of the nine platforms, or if you believe in, in, in the vast majority of it, and we get to the last platform, by the way, and it's legislative integrity. So in the platform is an aspect where we're supposed to be adhering to the platform. And so I think it's in spite of, it's in spite of the people that are in charge that we can still try and believe and work for the platform. And I think it's those people that are bastardizing it and, and, and I think until they change the platform to be with how they act, I think they are the rhinos. And I just, I'm concerned, I get it. I'm concerned about the, the cynicism because if you don't have, if you can't believe in the platform, then what do you do, not get involved in politics? That is not my, my stance at all. We need more people involved. I've always said that. I've, I've, I've spent 15 years of my life trying to get people involved in politics. But if we're going to judge people on their actions versus their intent, the, the platform is the intent, mm -hmm. but the actions do not match up to the intent. And for those of us who want to change the way that the party operates and, and be closer to the platform, we have to look at the actions and not just the, the, the words the that rhetoric. they say. Yeah. Because what matters is, when you push that button, and as you know, you've got that magical little uh, guard to make sure you don't push the wrong button. <laughs> uh, I, I do have. You know, that. maybe the party needs to issue those standard uh, right. issue like GI stuff. All right. Well, I, I frankly think that you and I are very much on the same page. I just, uh, you just um, have a little extra dose of cynicism uh, in you. Um, I, I w I've, I've come up with the term passionately jaded. That's a, that's a really, I like that term. I, I, because it, it just, because I've, Passion I've been doing this longer than you even, yeah. as far as uh, on an everyday basis. And, you know, at some point you, you realize how the system actually works, and it's not how we tell people it works. It's not. Now, that's both good and bad, because it's good for those of us who know how the system actually works, 
and can figure it out after you know a decade and a half in the business. Yeah. But uh, for for people who don't understand how it really works, when we tell people that this is the way it is, they get jaded much more quickly because they're a lot of the folks that are coming in in these new waves mm -hmm. are not as philosophically grounded as us, yeah. and so they are going to get discouraged a lot faster than faster we faster and easier. Absolutely. And so we need to act against that. Yep, agreed. Um, the the uh, the quote you have in here from Ronald Reagan: "The basis of conservatism is de is a desire for less government interference, or less centralized authority, or more individual freedom." And this is a pretty general description, also, of what libertarianism is. And I, I think that that I, I really like that quote, especially right now, because what you're describing of what's taking place uh, is what's taking place across the state right now. And it is an insurgence of people who are idealistic and wanting to be involved. And they, they, they want to have people who are accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beautiful thing about politics is when they actually start to hold their elected officials accountable. Ironically, uh, for some reason I was hearing it on radio today, uh, they're, they're being, they're being um, sort of marginalized by being called libertarians, small L libertarians. And I, it's ironic because in your quote here, Ronald Reagan is specifically saying that the things in the North Dakota Republican platform are, in a sense, libertarian, meaning liber the old form of libertarian, meaning free. We yeah. believe in freedom. Um, anyway, Dustin, it was awesome having you on. I could use another segment, but uh, I appreciate it. I th hopefully folks found it interesting. I love this kind of philosophical stuff. The war between the factions and the Republican Party and all political parties will continue no matter what, no doubt about it. Folks, uh, enjoyed spending the evening with you. Join us again tomorrow night. We are going to be talking more political philosophy.